forever and ever. And he shall reign forever and ever. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. It's funny because it's because because people say that we live we live in a PC culture right now, where it's pretty it's politically correct to say you know you can do whatever you want to do I can do whatever I want to do and try not to step on anybody's toes. But the funny thing is, the funny thing is is that people actually have literature. People actually write books to step on Christians' toes. People have whole religions dedicated to stepping on Christians' toes. And that's why nowadays the worst thing you can be is a Christian. I, I've noticed that everywhere we go, the police show up or a security guard show up, unless we're right here because they're used to us here. But when we go to Niagara Falls, security and police show up for some reason, you would think that we were biker dudes coming out there to start uh, ballroom brawls. We're coming with the love of Christ and the gospel of Jesus, and police show up and security guards show up. We go out preaching um, at Muslim Fest, and God bless you, sir. And, and, and security guards show up and police show up and they're there the whole time they're there the whole time while we're preaching and I'm thinking why when Christians show up the police and the um, and the security guards show up and you know why it's because we, we have a, a doctrine that's not PC we have a doctrine that steps on people's toes because we say that look you're a sinner but we say that we're all sinners. The Bible says we all have fallen short of the glory of God. But we're saying that you're a sinner, but this is the solution. We're saying that you have a problem, but this is the solution to your problem. Jesus Christ. So we're not just bringing a problem without a solution. And we're not even bringing a problem. We're just pointing out the problem. Now, people don't like their problems pointed out. So they say, you know what? Um, a Christianity or the truth or Jesus or, or me, I feel uncomfortable because you are pointing out my flaws. When, you're, when really it's you're pointing out your own flaws because the Bible says that if you don't have Christ, you're condemned already. Condemnation is this, that light has come into the world. Men chose darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. So you can tell when we, when we step into a place and a lot of police and a lot of security show up, it's because their deeds are evil and they don't want their deeds exposed. And Bible even said, Jesus said that had I not come into the world, then they would, be, they would have no cloak for their sin. But now I have come into the world, they have no excuse. And so I just believe it's all, it's all a spiritual thing. It's just a spiritual thing. When, when, when the light of the world comes into the world, because the Bible says that we are the light of the world, it shines light in the darkness. Oh, okay. We have shined light into the darkness. And so when we shine light into the darkness, what the light does is expose the darkness. Just think about if you live in a house and, and, it's, and the kitchen is dark. You can't tell how dirty that kitchen is. You can't tell that you got grease all over your stove, that there's chicken bones all on the ground, there's ants and roaches and rats uh, running around. There's like paint and like barbecue sauce all on the walls. Your fridge stinks. But when you cut on the light, you can see, oh my gosh, you need to clean this kitchen up. I can't believe you're living like this. You're living like an animal, and that's what the gospel is. The gospel is like everyone is, is sin, and sin is like that dirty kitchen. You got barbecue stains on your wall, there's grease all on the floor, rats and roaches running around. And so when Jesus Christ, it's like Jesus Christ is running, is walking into your kitchen, he cuts the lights on, and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to repent. Look at look how dirty my life is. Look at look at how far into sin I am. Look how look how disgusting I how, how, look how disgusting the way I, I'm living is. And so when 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 someone is ready to clean up the kitchen, when someone is ready to get all that filth out of the kitchen, then they're like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for cutting on the lights. And Jesus will give you a mop. The mop is like the blood of Jesus. Because he'll clean everything up in there, and 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 uh, and uh, and uh, and the cleaner is like the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will get everything out of that dirty kitchen, and you can see and you can see clearly to clean the other, to clean the brother's kitchen. The Bible even says, uh, get the mud out of your out of your eye first, and you can see clearly to get the plague out of your brother's eye. But if you don't want a clean kitchen, if you're a nasty slob. And you and, and Jesus cuts the lights on. You turn the lights Jesus. off. Yeah, turn the lights off, Jesus. Why you keep cutting the lights on in here? And that's, that's and that's that's the spiritual. And that's the same thing happens when we go preach the gospel in places full of darkness. We're cutting the lights on like, hey, here comes Jesus, because everywhere we go, we bring Jesus with us. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit lives in us, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. So everywhere we go, we bring Jesus with us, and we're cutting the lights on in your dirty kitchen. 
And if you're not ready for the Lord, then you're going to get mad and call the police. You're going to get mad and call security because you don't want your dirty kitchen exposed. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible says that go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means go and expose every creature. Turn on the lights in everyone's kitchen so they can know to get right with God. So they can know that the time is now for salvation. So they can know that light has come into the world and you can choose light instead of darkness. And your soul can be cleansed. And you can be cleansed. And you can be set free. And you can be set free. That's why the Bible says Jesus came to set the captives free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. indeed. Amen. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. You know, the way Jesus speaks is remarkable. It's fantastic. It's marvelous. It's amazing. He says so little, but it means so much. He says it's free indeed. Now you can you you can look you can look into that and 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 when I say when I when I hear Jesus say that I'm free indeed, it means I'm free in every area of my life. I'm free from sin. I'm free from struggle. I'm free from worry. I'm free from cares. The Bible says, "Cast your cares on God." You know that's the first thing that that I got down is casting my cares on God. It gives me a, a nonchalant demeanor. It seems that, I, that I'm nonchalant, but I'm not. It's just I worry not. And when you have nothing to worry about, you carry yourself that way. Because I have this giant safety net called God. So no matter what goes on in my life, I'm like, oh, God will take care of that. Oh, the, you, your bills are, don't worry, God will take care of that. Oh, the, you, your family's sick, don't worry, God will take care of that. Prayer takes care of everything. Because the Bible says if you pray believing, he, you will receive it. And that's beautiful. The Bible even says that greater things. You see these things that I did? Jesus said this. You see these things that I did? Yeah. Greater things you will do. Greater things you will do. And I believe these things. And the Bible even says this. The Bible says, uh, David said, I have hid thy laws in my heart so I would not sin against thee. And so, you know, I meditated on that scripture. And I got to thinking, you hid your, his words in your heart so you won't sin against you. What is that? And then I got the understanding that it's a difference between reading the word of God and eternalizing the word of God. Because when you read the word of God, you can get a, a you can get an understanding, but it's just words on the paper. But when those words on the paper become a part of you, you start living what the Bible says naturally. And so then then I understood, okay, so I, I gotta hide these words of God. I got even the Bible says, Hey, eat this scroll. In the book of uh, Jeremiah, I think it is. Or uh, Ezekiel, one of the prophets, like, eat this scroll, and he ate it. And then in Revelation, he says it again, eat this scroll. And I always thought about that, like, yo, why does God have people eating scrolls? And then I understand, it's, 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 maybe he really ate a scroll, but it's also metaphoric, metaphorically, <laughs> put your words inside of you. Because if those words are inside of you, you will naturally react the way God will react to things because his word is inside of you, and that's what's, uh, that's what's pumping through your body. That's your nutrients. It's just like when you when you when you eat something, you digest it and it becomes part of you. Your your body breaks it down and it becomes a part of your muscles. And some some become part of your fat, but it becomes a part of, of your being. And your body takes takes the nutrients to different places of your body to to go and, and operate and do what it's supposed to do. And so that's the same thing. The Bible says that God's word is like water. Now, man, uh, regular man without God, science says we can't last without water three days and we're out of there. The Bible says that God's word is like bread, like food. Uh, uh, another study says a man can't go 40 days without eating. He, he'll be out of there. He'll starve to death. So just imagine that. God says that his, his word is like water. And his, and his, and his word is like, is like food. It's like bread. It's like bread and water. But basically what he's saying is, eat my word. Eat my word. And then if you're thirsty, drink my word. And that word will become a part of you. And you'll start to live that word. And, and it'll become second nature to you. Just like when you train in something. Like when a boxer trains and he gets into the ring, it's section nature that if he goes this way, he throws a left. If he goes that way, he throws a right. When a skateboarder trains, same thing. He just like hits an ollie at the right time. When you're training basketball, you know when to take the jump shot, take the fadeaway, go for the layup, go for the dunk. And these things become naturally. They become embedded in you and you do it as, as part of your nature because you've been trained in the way of, 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 a, of a particular art. So that's the same thing the Bible says. Mixed with faith. <laughs> Hearing has to be mixed with faith. Amen. They perceive not. Amen. Hearing has to be mixed with faith. I'm going to say that again. Hearing has to be mixed with faith. God, you can be saved, brother. Believe in Jesus Christ, man. Murderous spirit, come out of that guy. Murderous spirit, come out of that guy. That demon keeps coming back here because he wants to be cast out. The guy wants to be free. Anyway, it becomes a second nature. 
to, to you. And so just like hearing the word of God, when you hear the word of God, it becomes a part of you, it becomes a second nature to you, and you automatically react as God would react because that's who you are, that's who he is, and you become like him. Now, this is, what, this is what's wrong with society, or this is what's wrong with, with, with religion. Religion tries to take God away from us. Um, every religion that's not of God, every religion that doesn't have Jesus Christ or has reduced Jesus Christ to a prophet or re reduced Jesus Christ to just some sort of uh, farmer or fisherman or some sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, magician has, has taken away salvation from the people. And taking away salvation for the people is basically killing people and sending them to hell. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the Bible says turn from your wicked ways and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent and believe in the gospel. So you sacrifice your life so I can be free, so I can be how, so I can change.